Hello, 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 friends of God, people of God. God bless you. Welcome to this glory broadcast. Wow, this is going to be a powerful, jam-packed broadcast because there's something supernatural that God is doing, and he's wanting for us to partner with him. You know, we are, uh, you know, we're not waiting on a move of God. God's waiting for us. So this is surely a time of miracle signs and wonders. And in a few minutes, I'm going to be bringing on our guest, our friend, the one and only God's general, Dr. Robert Lairdin. We're going to be bringing on the man of God. But friends, I want you to comment below where you're watching from. Uh, I want you to share this on your wall. Tag somebody uh, because this is going to be powerful. And today, myself and Dr. Roberts, we're going to talk about discerning the times because we need to understand uh, you know, what God is doing. And the greater your discernment on the times, then the greater your alignment and your partnership and your kairos with the Holy Spirit. Uh, so a lot of people are misjudging the times and are misjudging the weather in a sense. And so we need to get our prophetic senses. We need to operate in the gift of discernment and we need to begin to get ready because I'm telling you, God is about to move like never before. So friends, we want to welcome you. We, we are here on Facebook and we're also here on YouTube. So we want to welcome all of our family on YouTube and Facebook. God bless you. Praise God. Continue to comment below where you are watching from. Share this on your wall. Amen. Hallelujah. In a few minutes, we're going to have the man of God, Dr. Roberts. Let it jump on. Of course, he is a general himself, a general of the faith. Praise God. Hello there, Prophet Yvonne. I see you. Heidi, I see you. Dr. Angela, hello. Heidi Winther, Luli, Alicia Jackson. Praise the Lord. Sajda, Alisa, Pauline, Melissa, good to see you. Mary Martin from New York, India in the house. Hello there, Shane, good to see you from Japan. Katie Wilbanks from PA. I hope to see you because I'm going to be in Pennsylvania next week. Glory to God. Friends of God, help us to get the numbers and the algorithms up today. Amen. Before we have the man of God in, we want to have the atmosphere right. Amen. We need to receive the man of God with an atmosphere of expectation and an atmosphere of honor. Amen. Hello there, Apostle Lydia from Arizona. I see you. Praise God. Amen. There is going to be an anointing uh, for you to be able to discern the times. And when you discern properly, you will be able to break through and step into the overflow. And I don't know about you, but I do not want to miss out on what God is doing. Amen. I believe we are on the precipice of something so dynamic. So continue to share and tag somebody. Praise God. And of course, I'm here in the new studio and we're working on some things. Praise God. Someone say new. And uh, we're working on some things and getting things ready. More production, more media, social media production to get the word of God, to get the gospel out to the ends of the earth. Praise God. And of course, even today, we're in the middle of Purim which is a minor feast, a minor Jewish feast. So, and last night I talked about, uh, you know, reversing the curse and the power of your decrees and reversing every false decree word assignment against you. And that is the anointing that we are in right now in the midst of Purim. So let the Esthers arise, let Mordecai be honored and let every Haman spirit be destroyed. So expect breakthrough in the season of Purim, praise God. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about discerning the times with our good friend and guest, Dr. Robert Lairdon. People of God, let's continue to share because I'm going to bring the man of God in in about one more minute. So praise God. Comment below where you are watching from. Hello there, Melissa. Shu, thanks for being a subscriber. Lynn David, good to see you. Yes, Pastor Sharon, amen. Let the Esters arise. DC from Oklahoma. Hallelujah. Rabba Seta Labata. Shandala Labata. 
That's right. Let the numbers increase, my friends. Let's break the algorithms today. God is breaking the spirit of confusion off of a generation so that we will know what the Lord is doing. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, from Mumbai, India. <laughs> yes, from Oregon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, friends of God, I want you to give the man of God some hearts and likes as we welcome the one and only Dr. Roberts Laird. Dr. Roberts, welcome to the broadcast today, sir. It's good to be with you again. It's always good to be with Ben Lim and his friends. I like it very much. <laughs> Well, we like and love you very much as well, sir. We honor you. We welcome you. We receive you. And just thank you for your friendship. Yeah. Well, I was telling you earlier, a lot of my friends, when I started up in ministry, I was in my 20s and they were in their 40s and 50s. And as I grown older, they graduated to heaven or they came to the sunset years of their life. And so I'm learning a new generation. And you're one of my new generation special friends that I like a whole lot. So I'm glad to always be with you. Well, thank you so much, sir. I mean, I just turned 32 last two weeks ago. What a good age. Could I do that again, please? <laughs> yes, do it again. Well, you can live vicariously through my young life, I suppose, but. Don't do what your hair does is the problem. So. Oh, uh, well, we, we can get that fixed. We, we okay. That. But, sir, I mean, let, let's start off the bat with that because, I mean, you said most of your friends have now passed on to glory. And, uh, you know, the generals, and of course, you are the author of God's Generals, one of the best-selling book series in the charismatic Christian evangelical world. Uh, but most of your friends have passed on to glory, and there's a new generation rising. Let's talk about just that phenomenon, because in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 57, the Bible says uh, that the righteous perish and the wicked do not consider it, that it's a sign to this generation. Uh, we had Jack Hayford just passed recently. Um, Lauren Cunningham, of, you know, of course, he's struggling in his health right now. And Arlene Cunningham and YWAM, they just released an official post. So a lot of the generals, the apostolic fathers and mothers are going home. Talk to us. It is the, it's what we may call the circle of life. It's the, the life plan or the life schedule of, of normal living. Um, like I said a moment ago, I was in my teens and early 20s when I began being friends with Alexis Summerall, Or Roberts, Hagen, and then, you know, Rod Parsley, all that group. And um, so I grew I grew to middle age when they grew to the end of their life. And I knew that one day that I may be one of the few left that actually knew these people that are around the world. But I never realized that um, the feeling that you go through, I went through, realizing I don't have many friends left. I have the people who I used to talk to, I used to preach with. I can walk into a conversation and mention buzzwords or mention a name or a little nickname, and they'd all know what you're talking about. Today, when I go have a, a meal with a young pastor or a new friend, uh, I will say something and they don't understand. And so it's some of those things that people my age are going through, but I do find it exciting. Because I get to live two lives. I get to live one life from a young man to my middle with that generation. And then I get to live from my middle to my end with your generation. And so I decided not to be a life coach or a mentor, but actually try to be a spiritual dad. And I also want to be a guy that actually gets out there and works in the fields with my spiritual children and my friends. I don't want to be in the stands giving advice, drinking my Coca-Cola and hot dog, watching the football players. I may not be the quarterback, but I can at least block for somebody. I can do something for somebody. And that's how I want to live my life. And uh, so I've had to learn uh, to accept that reality. And one thing I had to learn to do with your generation is not many of you, you were different, Ben. You build a bridge to us. Most of the time, you got to build a bridge to these guys. And it's sometimes you got to learn the language. You got to learn the, the culture. Their points of references are all different than what I grew up with. Some things that you guys are casual about, my generation was hyper about or very resistant. So I have to adjust not to be overbearing. And so it's a new learning process that I'm thinking one day I'm going to write a book about it, maybe help, help folks after I'm dead, how to build these bridges for their generation, because it's not comfortable. You grow up with a certain culture, a certain mindset, and then all of a sudden it all changes like I always jokingly tell the story when I came back from London, I lived there for five years 
and I was in a Heidi Baker meeting, <laughs> and I knew Heidi when she was depressed. So you, she used to come to my church in California, when she talks about the sad days before the Toronto blessing happened to her. Well, that's when I remember her. She would come to my church and visit, and she was all sad. But I got came to her meeting, and she was great. And they had a whole different language and a different way of operating things. They were soaking. Well, I never heard that term in my life. That, that's not a term we use. Fall under the power, slain in the spirit, drunk in the Holy Ghost, soaking. And I remember saying, what are you soaking in? Because it was not the vocabulary that I, they all left just like you did because it's two different worlds. Now, either you get offended by it or you say, all right, teach me. I don't know what that means. And so that's how I begin to, to learn the new language. We used to have revelations. Now we have encounters and downloads. And so it's a whole new vocabulary, meaning the same thing, but use different language. And so those are, you know, those are fun things you've got to learn and go through. Wow. Well, you just said so much there, Dr. Roberts. And again, thank you for wanting to build those bridges. And um, there, there's a number of things that you just said that I want to just kind of digress or pull out. Uh, I feel like, you know, for me, every year I continue to feel a greater sense of the fear of God and just a greater sense of urgency and responsibility that's on my life and our ministry. And I'm sure uh, for you, as you watch some of the greats past, like Oral Roberts, of course, he was a dear friend to you, and some of the other greats, your friends passing on to glory, did you feel that sense of burden or responsibility or the fear of the Lord? Of course, we're not supermen. You know, it's, it doesn't rest all on our shoulders, but did you feel that type of uh, urgency or that type of fear? Well, I, I, there, there is an urgency and there is a... Uh, how would I say, an, an overwhelming reality you have to come to, because they used to tell us, Brother Summerall, Brother Roberts, we'd sit at the table with them after services or be with them in their offices, and they'd say, one day we'll be gone, and it'll be up to you guys. It'll be up to you to build the quality of the gospel and the extending of the gospel. And, you know, when you're 20 years old, when, they're, when we're your age sitting at their table, well, that's great. That's long in the future. Well, one day it came. And I realized when Billy Joe passed away, Brother Roberts had passed away, Brother Summer, all these guys have passed away, that that day had come. And then all of a sudden, people like yourself, uh, your age group, begin to call me dad. So that was a shock. Like, what? Because in my mind, I was still the guy under the papas working. And because I have a strong personality, people don't always see this about me. About me I'm more of a team player than most people think. I, I can work and cooperate. And I prefer to be a part of a team and not always the top guy because the top guy gets all the hell. I'll be number two or three so he can take the heat and I can have the fun. And so that's what years have taught me. You can have number one, you can have the bigger crowds. I'll be two, three or four and be happy and not have, to have all the stresses. But I realized that the day had come to where that responsibility now has to be accepted in my mind and in my heart and that everything I do has a greater repercussion than it did in the earlier years because of the position. And so it is It is an overwhelming, and there is a fear of God because the condition of Christianity falls to our leadership skills and abilities. And it's not that the gospel stayed alive. It's the quality of gospel that you keep alive and that you hand to the next generation. And the extending of the gospel, making sure that it is still going into no gospel territories, or hostile territories, the extending of the gospel has to continue to cover the whole earth and it becomes our leadership responsibility. Wow, love it, love it. Well, thank you for sharing all that. I mean, I, I just feel like, you know, uh, right now, a lot of people are not adjusting. And, you know, like what you said is that you're able to adjust, you're able to learn the language and, and praise God for that. But a number of people, are not able to adjust or learn the language. They're still wanting to be on their throne or be on top till they fully pass rather than passing on the mantles or helping raise up leaders. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, on Papa Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, uh, you know, on his tombstone, you know, is written millions called him dad. Yeah. And I thought that was such an incredible thing. Millions called him dad. And I feel like, a lot of people are not able to adjust right now, and but you're one of them that's able to adjust. 
it's not always easy because you have your own, I'm 57, I had a birthday just a few weeks ago. So for 57 years, I've lived a certain way, talked a certain way, acted a certain way, and things work a certain way. Now it's all shifting. If you don't change, then you become an historical marker while yet you're still alive. Now I'd rather write about history and not become a marker while I'm still alive. Let me be that after I'm dead, put it on a tombstone or you know whatever, but you have to get up and be willing to change and be willing to, I'm sitting in meetings. Let me give an example. I'm sitting in meetings where I'm like, I could fix this whole thing in 10 minutes because I've lived long and done this. They're young and they're making mistakes with the offering with this and that. And I have to sit there and just be happy and support it and not say a word, even though I thought if I could help you do this, this would be better for you and your people. But you have to learn how to fit and not dominate. And when you are fitting, then there comes the respect and the moment when they ask the question and they're ready to hear an answer. But some people's temperament can't do that. And you have to work the fruits of the spirit, not the gifts of the spirit here, the fruits of the spirit in your life to become that person with that next generation, because it's going to take gentleness, love, long suffering, temperance, all those things are have to be in you to handle where God's going to place you to be a blessing and a strength to him. Well, amen and amen. Well, we're definitely grateful for your life, sir. And, and uh, I remember, I mean, just last year, I mean, you preached at my church three times and We've, we've got together like this, which is wonderful. Uh, but I remember for a number of years, I was kind of chasing you and trying to pursue you and connect with you. I think it was literally about seven to eight, ten years. And it was that long. Well, yes, what you should have done is just got up and walked in my office and said, is he here? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, well, it, it, it took that long. But right when you and I connected last year, boom, it was just like that. And I think that is a suddenly or that's a kairos. And sometimes everybody watching now, you may be pursuing a man of God or a woman of God, and you may be pursuing something and it feels like it's not happening, but all of a sudden at the right time, the timing of God, it comes into alignment and there's always an assignment. There's always a kingdom purpose. And to me, it's how the, my generation can also find their placement because we're not always the top leaders. For example, I heard Kenneth Hagin say one time, because I used to live about three miles from Raymond Tulsa, and uh, he got up and said, now, there's another a revival coming. He was talking about that. And he goes, you're all waiting for me to lead it. And he goes, and I'm not the one called to lead it. I'm called to lead the word of faith and to die teaching faith. He goes, I'll participate in it, but I'm not the leader of it. Now, to me, that is one of the greatest statements I ever heard a man of God make. He removed himself from being the top guy when he was the top guy by saying, I'm not called to lead the next one. I did this one. I'll be a part of it. So you young men run on ahead of me, go on out there and go. Well, that's a big deal. Not everybody can do that. And uh, so I hope that more of my generation will get the maturity and the fruits and the confidence to be able to do what they're called to do and, and not have to be the top dog, just be, be in there. Some are all used to pray, Lord, don't leave me out of anything you're doing in the earth. Let me have a part. He didn't pick what part. He said, just give me a place. And I think sometimes wherever you want me, as long as I'm on the field, I want to still do something. I don't want to be a spectator. I don't want to be a God that lives over here and, you know, just gives advice, but never does nothing. I want to die with dirt on my face and blood on my sword. That's how I want to die. Come on, that's so good. Because uh, we want to go out with a big bang. We want to go yeah. out with with a, a big show. You know, we want to go out with saving souls, bringing them to Jesus. I love that, sir. Well, let's talk about the Asbury revival because we're talking about discerning the times, and we are talking about the next generation. And I'm a millennial. I'm 32, and uh, of course, this Asbury revival, which mainly started with Gen Z which are current day university students and God is moving into university college campuses and the Asbury revival boom in a sense out of nowhere just sparked and of course you could say was there a correlation with the prophetic word of Bob Jones about the Kansas City Chiefs winning the Super Bowl you know I believe February is a very prophetic month because 
number of prophets have gone home to be with the Lord. So there's something supernatural stirring in this season and in this year, however. And the Asbury revival started, and there's revival fires spreading out everywhere. But let's talk about the Asbury revival because we are also talking about the next generation. Dr. Roberts, what are your thoughts? You know, and you are a revival teacher, revival historian. Um, what are your thoughts just on the phenomenon of the season we're in? And we see the Jesus Revolution movie come out in Jesus' name, another gospel-centered movie. And so things are happening. What are your thoughts? Talk to us as we're in this broadcast right now. I think we are in the time when all the prophetic words and dreams and feelings and shiftings are manifesting in the natural. They're no longer, you have to pick them up in the spirit or sense them. Like Asbury, when I heard Asbury broke out in revival, I began to shout and cry at the same time because for me, that's a significant moment known revival history and what kind of people they are. They're not prophetic people like us. They're not spirit-filled, tongue-talking. They're evangelical Christians that are sincere, kind, love God, prayerful. And I did some research we came on this on the broadcast today. Here, they've had nine revival outbreaks at Asbury from 1905 to 1923, nine different outbreaks. The 1970s one, I think it was 77, was the largest until this one. And uh, so it, it, they have something in that ground, in that school that can get that revival in the earth and get it going. Uh, and that's very interesting to me that they have that ability to, to do that. So when I heard that it broke out, I thought, oh, my God, th this is it. And then as it began to go, it went for about 14, 15 days. Everything you start talking about in revival history and Bible revivals all were happening not in Christian news. It was happening on national news. It was happening everywhere. I'm like, oh, my. And then it was hitting at other colleges like Lee College and the one up in Cedarville, uh, Ohio, I think it was. And there may be more than I don't know. But so I thought, ooh, ooh, it's happening. So my first thing I besides excited to happen, second was it was like the Welch Revival. When the Welch Revival hit, it didn't just hit Mariah Chubb or Evan Roberts was, it was hitting other chapels or other churches in Wales at the same time with the same type of effect. The, the people were repenting, getting it right, the crowds were growing. It was, it was arresting the cities where they were in. And so what I saw with Asbury, it began to hit like the Welch Revival. Now, let me make a, a, a comparison to Azusa Street. Now, I love Azusa Street, but it's not like Azusa, Azusa Street. It hit in one place. You had to come and get it and take it back. Mm. We only have record of maybe two or three other places where the Azusa thing happened at that time when people had come and gone back. Chicago, North Carolina, and a, like one other place. But it didn't spread like the Welch Revival. Uh, so it, that was my first, like, okay, this is happening this way. Now, the problem we got into is it grew so fast. This is probably the, I call it the TikTok revival. This was how the revival actually began uh -huh. to spread. The Lakeland outpouring was a TV network revival where the network got behind it. Now, there's nothing wrong with it. It was just the first time those things happened where God TV aired it practically on their network 24 seven. So the magnitude of that reach helped it grow. So the Asbury one was the college students that begin to TikTok. There's something happening in the chapel. You all got to come and it begin to spread. And then it begin to spread. As I understand, just to kind of make sure in case someone doesn't know what happened, was they had a chapel service. They have chapel several times a week at Asbury. It is a Wesleyan uh, holiness college. So it's an evangelical college. And uh, they had a normal chapel. I actually heard the sermon of the guy that preached before the revival hit. It was nice, it was okay, but it wasn't one of those like, wow, it was like, okay. And then students lingered after it was dismissed about 20, I guess, you know, 18 or 20 students, and they began to worship and it just began to flow into prayer and worship. And that move of their heart and hunger and the move of the spirit snapped and it grew to what we call the present day Asbury revival. So that's how it started. Now, you, you want me to keep going or you want to interject? Because I, I, I don't want to hog the whole thing here. I can, I can feel and hear your excitement on this, so keep going. <laughs> okay, go. You can interrupt me, okay? Just do timeout or something and I'll stop. 
But when this began to happen, like I, be, I of course, tuned into it. I had a plane in my office on our TVs in my ministry headquarters. So the revival was the best we could get to it. And I thought, I need to go. So I thought, well, let's let it roll for a couple of weeks and then I'll show up when it's a little healthier and strong. And um, But here's what began to happen. We had over 50,000 people hit a town in 14 days. On one day, I think it was on the weekend, 20,000 people were uh, in this town. Now, you may not understand that, but let me describe the town for you. The town population is only 6,300 people, okay? Now, over here in America, we have a TV show called Andy Griffith. Now, I'm going to use this, and I'm not trying to be negative, but I think we'll get it. We have, we have Andy Griffith, Barney Five, and Aunt B, and all the little characters. That's the kind of town we're in, okay? Everybody knows everybody. They know what dog belongs to whose house. And the whole thing in the town revolves around the college. So it's really a college Christian town. Now, they have seven full-time policemen, all right? They have four part-time policemen and one office manager. That's the police force of Wilmore, Kentucky, where the revival happened and Asbury is headquartered, all right? So can you imagine the mayor and the city council wakes up one day and the chief of police has to call the mayor and go, we have a problem. It's not murder. It's not a bank robber. Uh, it's not raping. It's not drunk driving. It's not arson. We have people coming by the tens of thousands to a chapel to have a revival service. Can you imagine what the thoughts were of these characters? Because they don't think Christian thoughts like we do or revival hope and revival. They run a city. Their job is to keep the road together, keep everybody safe, keep the food in the city and just take care and manage so there's peace and prosperity in their town. They wake up on that Saturday after the revival's been going for a week and they have to close the town down. Now, when I first heard that, I thought, close down the town. And then I realized it wasn't because they didn't want people in. The town was at full capacity of people and cars. There were no place else for cars to park. They were everywhere. They were in people's lawns, wrong driveways. They filled up. It was crazy. And people were parking anywhere and walking. So you've got, you've got seven full-time policemen. How do you handle 20,000, how do you handle 5,000 extra? I mean, that's what's going on. And so the chapel, here's some more stats. The chapel only seats 1,489 people, not even 1,500. So it's not a large building. Now, I preached in Asbury Chapel about four or five years ago with my good friend, Don Coleman, good man. And it's it's a beautiful chapel. And, uh, you know, but it's old. It's not a modern like Old Roberts University or some of the other colleges that have big buildings and capacity. It's a small, uh, nice, I think the student body is about 2000, I think. So it's not real dinky, but it's not real, real big. And so the chapel, people have to wait in hours. So there are pictures of people all over the town in line yeah. to go to the chapel. Then we have practical problems. Now here's what most people don't realize about revival. Please listen to me. It yeah. costs money. All right. so. All of a sudden, your 1489 chapel, your bathrooms that you built can handle that. All right. It can't handle 5,000. It can't handle 10,000. It cannot handle 50,000. So what we do, we have portal potties come up, but then we have a problem. The ones in the building were so used, they begin to break. So I was in the bathroom that they talked about where two of the stalls over flooded and was you know flooding Two was right. And so all of a sudden, you've got besides we love Jesus, we're singing and we're worshiping, we have a bathroom problem. We have a parking problem. The mayor is on the phone trying to get the president of the college. What are you going to do? So you have what I call uh, perfect revival problems that no one thinks about until you're hit. Yeah. And so this may be something fun for you and, and for others to do is to get your team together and say, what if God hits us with 10,000 people? in our facility or what, can we handle that? So let's act like it's happening and we've got problems and go through some scenarios so you don't get totally caught off guard. You do have some planning about it. I had uh, to change just the top topic just for a moment. I had John Kilpatrick at my minister's meeting in Florida and I asked him, how much did the Pensacola Brownsville Revival cost? 
And he goes, well, I don't know the figure. He goes, but let me tell you, this will give you the insight. My Kleenexes and toilet paper went into the thousands mm. a month, not a year, a month. He goes, my electric bill went so high, I quit looking at it. I just prayed over it and I let somebody else do it because I couldn't take it. He goes, and I had to replace the carpet twice during the revival because the people had worn it out. Wow. He said, that's just some stuff I can tell you. He goes, but these are problems that Brownsville had. Asbury had these kind of problems. Now, here's the, here's the beginning of the behind the scenes look. We're dealing with people who talk about revival in hours. So when they decide to close it, well, I was not happy. I'm respectful, but not happy. And uh, so I'm like, Lord, we finally got this thing coming. It's hitting the college campuses where our greatest challenges are at. So it is a total God happening that I'm like, yes. And then you tell everybody you're going to close it on the 15th day and it's over. And I'm like, oh, Lord. And so here's. Here's the challenges. When I look back at Asbury, so I went back and, and read through some of their stuff. The first thing I begin to notice, they talk about revival in hours. Every one of their revivals from 1905, they refer to it was 110 hours, 60 hours. They talk about it in hours. That means in your mindset, hours is yeah. the only thing we can really deal with. We can't deal with days, weeks, or months, okay. or even years. And uh, so that was like, okay, they don't think beyond a short time. That's why they're closing. Now, I'm going to say something that I don't want to offend, but I'm going to say it. The evangelical community, as I've read their history, they love Jesus. They're good people. They're, I, I'm, I'm in their club. They just don't like me because I speak in tongues, but I love them. But when something, they, I'll say it this way, they are very concerned about things getting too emotional, too fleshly, too over the top where we full gospel folks go, ignore that and keep going. They uh -huh. are fearful of how their reputation will be. And there's a problem that was beginning to hit. Now I must say, watching the revival on the live feed, I must give all the Pentecostal charismatic tongue talking people that attended, you did good. You didn't try to overtake it and bring your tongues in. And you came, submitted in there, drank of it, got blessed by it and took it back. So may I salute them that of the full gospel disposition did what was right and that your pastors have taught you well, you did well, you went in, you drank, you didn't overtake, you didn't cause obscene, you didn't try to prophesy when everybody was quiet. Come on. Thank you for being mature in the move of God. Because I'm not sure that my generation, when we were your age, would have done that. We were a little more different. But I must say the training that's gone out in revival has helped us in that way. So evangelicals, what they do in their history is when something gets out of their control or makes them nervous, they start reorganizing. And then they can reorganize it to make it a little more containable. When they cannot reorganize for containment or control, then they begin to kill it or close it because that's the only thing they know. It's beyond their understanding what to do spiritually and sometimes naturally. And they start using statements like the one they use. Well, we can't stop what we didn't start. Yes, you can, because God chose to use you to be the one on the earth he started it with. Mm. And so as much as I love you, respect you, appreciate you, and will defend you, these are things that I begin to think, what is going on, and to give an explanation to those things. And then that's why it closed down. Now, I realized we have a problem. We got It's overwhelming the town. It's overwhelming the, the college, the chapel. It's, it's growing at a rate that nobody can really get, can control it, which is called revival. Revival is overwhelming crowds of hungry people that God is meeting in the building, on the lawn, in the parking lot, on the road, you know, at the farm where they're plowing the fields in 50 days. It's all, it, it, it was there. And so they had to do something. You had to get them out of that building or that building will be torn to pieces. And so my thought would have been, can you open up all the churches in town? would be the first step, maybe. Get all the churches to open their buildings, not control the meeting, open them, be in there to help govern it a little bit, but just let it keep rolling like it was at the Asbury and see how that goes. And while that is happening, if it keeps growing, go talk to some farmers and ask if you can rent their fields and explain to them 
We need to rent your field because God's visiting. Now, I need to explain to you, we'll pay the rent on the field, but I need to explain what your field will look like when we're done. There will be no grass. There'll be very few leaves in the trees that are left. There'll be tire marks everywhere, foot marks, and all that will be there. So your whole field's going to be replowed and reseeded. We'll help pay for that. But that's what's going to happen to your field. But you'll be known where God visited multiple thousands of people. That's how I would have, or I'd have found a building big enough that I could have used to do that or got a tent. Now, I do understand from one of the services that the president of Asbury, he was in Sarasota where I was, where my headquarters are. My secretaries went to the meeting and he got up and, and explained that they had prepared a tent and talked to farmers. Then they said they felt like the Lord told them no. And I'm like, okay, no. Why did he say no? And they felt like it was to spread. Well, I think that's the right view. And that's one of the great things about Asbury is it starts and it spreads. But you can end it too soon yeah. before the spreading is healthy enough to maintain its own life out there. It still needs an umbilical cord of support for a short season. And that's why I think it ended a little early. Even though we're hearing it's still spreading, but it's not at the pace or the strength it was because the main source of it the tip of the spear had been cut off. So let's don't be angry. Let's learn. So that when God visits us again or visits your church or your city, that we manage it a little bit better. We don't control it. We do managerial assistance to it, not managerial control over it. How do you host or support a revival like that? Uh, it's overwhelming to anybody. So those are some of my thoughts. And I'll stop and let you comment. And I'll come back. Okay. Well, wow, wow, wow. I mean, Dr. Roberts, if I mean, I mean, no, nobody is an expert of revival. I mean, of course, we study moves of God. You know, we can be revival nerds. And I mean, and you uh, respectfully, I mean, you've been in a number of different moves of God and uh, you, you've sat under and been with some of the greatest generals of our century of our time um, who have really shifted the world and shaken the earth. And, you know, but I really love everything that you've shared, uh, just just your commentary, your thoughts on Asbury Revival, because this shows that there is a hunger in America. And the time is now, whether it's at Asbury, whether it's in Florida, whether it's in this ministry, that ministry, it doesn't matter. Let's go after it. And of course, we cannot manufacture it. Yes, there's a realm of God's sovereignty, but there's also our own part and our own doing and our own hunger. It doesn't mean we religiously try to create something or do something. But when the elements come together, a number of years ago, Dr. Roberts, the Lord talked to me about the recipe for revival. And in order for there to be a move of God, there has to be certain recipes or ingredients. There has to be certain ingredients. There has to be hunger. There has to be honor. Has to be the miraculous has to be faith, has to be, uh, you know, finances. There has to be uh, a, a supernatural momentum of growth and numbers. And, you know, so when all those ingredients come together, it just explodes to the next level. But I believe right now, again, God's response to the world is not a governmental solution. It is a spiritual awakening. It's not, it's not, changes in the media. No, it's first and foremost, a spiritual awakening. I am a full believer, Dr. Roberts, that the reason why the Renaissance happened, it was because of the Reformation. It was because of the Gutenberg Press and Martin Luther's Reformation of the Bible being released. That's why there was a Renaissance all across the earth. People of God, there is going to be, there's going to be moves of God all across the earth, and we need to catch this fire. We need to ride the winds, the waves, because there has been a momentum. There has been a momentum. So are you going to be the firebrand that catches it and takes it up? Dr. Roberts, any thoughts on this before I move on? Well, I, I think revival, I was, I my phone began to ring the last week when they were going to close it. And one of the questions that I got asked often is revival transferable? Can you go get it and carry it? Well, you can see that throughout revival history in the Bible and in church history. So yes, it is able to drink of it, 
get imparted by it and take it someplace. So I would encourage people not to allow the disappointment of its early closure to hinder what you did get and go spread it and go let it flow out of you. That's what I'm hoping. I think it's very possible. I think it can keep going, but uh, we're going to have to make sure that you, you, you keep that fire going or it'll, it'll go out soon. So we don't want it to go out. Well, you know, I know for me, as our, as our revival was taking place, it stirred something in my spirit, you know, and the meetings that I had in different places, you could just feel that there's, there was a hunger and a stirring and a greater sense of awakening. So I believe we're in that season, friends, and we need to discern the times and we need to discern what is God's heart. And, you know, Dr. Roberts, you know, believes that, uh, you know, it, it was cut short. You know, I, I agree with that. But I also believe that those who have ears to hear are catching it and taking it to the next level. Now, Dr. Roberts, in the last few minutes here, this year started off with a big bang. I mean, I mean, you got the Asbury Revival, you got the Jesus Revolution film, but also on the retrospect, I mean, you got Ukraine, right? You got Russia. Uh, we have the oil spills in East Palestine, Ohio. We have a number of the more daunting uh, things. Uh, I know we were talking about revival and we're all getting heated up, but there's the other side of reality. And... I, again, revival and awakening is God's response for the world and for the church in midst of the dark times that we are in right now. What time, season do you believe we're in right now, Dr. Roberts? What season, time do you believe we, the church, and the world is in right now? Of course, we're next year, 2024, is going to be the election again. Come on, somebody. So things are going to start wrapping up for the elections, right? And yeah. the economy, et cetera, et cetera. So talk to us what your thoughts are, man. Well, let, me, let me go to a familiar verse to help answer that question. Isaiah 61, okay? And uh, 60, 60 verse one and verse two. It says, arise and shine for the light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. We know this verse. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall rise upon you and his glory shall be seen and the Gentiles shall come to your light and the king to the brightness of its rising. Now, we have a very interesting, this to me is a revival verse. You have light and darkness, glory and gross darkness. So we have four things, and we have one level of revival called light and one level of darkness. Then you have the glory, which is intensified revival and gross darkness. I believe we're in the beginning of the gross darkness era of this verse. But just because it's gross darkness, we get greater glory. So we that are in the light are going to move from light to glory. That's why all the glory preaching is going on. The glory call, the glory talk, the glory, glory. I used to think, what's all this glory stuff? And I realized it's prep work for this moment because darkness is moving to gross darkness. The light of God is moving to an intention or to a weighty glory, which counteracts the darkness. And so we're going to have to learn how to live in the great glory next to gross darkness. And that is why we're hearing some of our cultural problems. That's why we've seen some of the issues in the world that you mentioned. Listen to this. The glass superpower, America, our national conversation is not on solving cancer and world hunger and these kind of things. We're fighting for people to be confused over whether they're male or female. We, we, we're dealing with issues like what, what, what we were educated. We're the most affluent people in the earth. And our national conversation is at that level. Welcome to the beginning of gross darkness. If you think what we've heard is shocking, there's more coming. But we're going to have to be aware of it, but not focused on it. Because where there's gross darkness, there is glory. God intensifies his presence around his people and purpose. Then verse three says, they're going to see the light. Now, what I think part of the revival is going to be is non-believers are going to get so disgusted with the gross darkness, with the evil, with the corruption, the, 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 the insanity of what's going on. They're going to say, we want out. And they're going to see the glory upon the guy's house in the neighborhood whose kids are normal. The family is good. They serve the Lord and they're going to go, 
How do we have a life like yours? Part of the revival is they're going to see the glory. They're going to see the light and the people in the darkness are going to run to the light. And our homes better be ready. Our churches better be ready. Our Christian business, business people should be ready to begin to take in the people that are coming out of the, the gross darkness to get them saved and clean them up and help them. Every Christian is going to be a worker. Every Christian is going to have people they're responsible for, not in Africa, in America, not in Asia, but in America. America, we're going to see not just signs of wonders and glory like that, but we're going to, people are going to see how we live. We live in a peace. We live in a joy. We live in a prosperity. We live in a, in a health and they're going to run. Our kids know that they're a man. They know that they're a girl. They know, they know the facts of life and are living good. They're going to run to us like they did in the altar calls of past revivals, not just because of the preacher preaching, because they see the glory and they're sick of the gross darkness and they're going to run. And that's a revival happening that's about to start happening in a greater way. Wow, Dr. Roberts, uh, I, I feel very stirred right now. I mean, mm. I, I feel very stirred. If you are, are feeling just a spirit of awakening and you're getting stirred for revival, I want to say amen, and I want you to just comment, and I see a number of people commenting. I want you to comment the name of your city. Los Angeles is ready. Phoenix is ready. New York is ready. Miami is ready. Because God is getting these revival hubs, these smaller you know, groups, uh, com compiled, accumulated groups, the body of Christ ready. And truly the nameless and faceless, the all saints move. God is getting a body of people ready, uh, like the TikTok generation. Uh, you know, God is getting the masses ready to carry the glory of God and to walk in a demonstration of his power and his glory. But we need to adjust, like Dr. Robert said. We need to adjust. We need to shift. And I know for about the last two years, Dr. Roberts, I've been talking about Noah and the flood that's coming and that we need to get the ark ready. We need to get our storehouse is ready like Joseph did, but we need to get ready because something bigger and greater is coming. Now, Dr. Roberts, last thoughts here uh, before we close, hallelujah, and you release a prayer of wisdom and revelation over us, but what, what do you believe we need to do to prepare and to get ready? Because I believe this will be the best year of our lives, number one. And also, number two, I believe this year is not just about 2023, but I believe this is a huge year of transition that's going to catapult us for the rest of this decade, politically, spiritually, personally, financially. So this is a real teeter-tottering year. But what, what do you believe we need to do to prepare and to adjust? Because there's a lot of changes a lot of things that are coming, and I do believe that God's releasing revival glory all across the earth. Well, I think one, you're gonna to have to make sure you're in the revival glory. You're gonna to have to get your feet over where the move of God is. And the way you do that is besides moving in the sense of your heart's there, and this is, this is a tough word for me to say because I don't like saying these kind of things. There are geographical moves required in some people's lives too, to actually move from where you are to take you and your family to where you need to be. Now, as much as I don't want to be that prophetic voice going, gee, gravel moves are coming, I have to be. God is going to, you have to make move in your heart and, and, the, and the spirit, but also there's geographical moves, part of it. Uh, number two, we're going to get back and put our feet solidly into the logos. Some of our generation is only flying in the spirit and then have the stability of a foundation because they've not put their some of their time into the word. Now, folks, if you have the word only, you dry up and become dry as shucks. If you only have the spirit, you blow up and you become unimportant. You don't have any influence. You become a space cadet. If you put word and spirit together, you grow up, you become healthy, you become a leader, you become a pillar that we need right now. So you're going to combine those things together and you're going to have to grow up spiritually to where you can be led by the spirit yourself without Everybody's speaking to you. Can you hear God's voice clearly for yourself? And then I would say, go back and keep doing what I call the basics of Christian living. Right living, word, prayer, worship. Do you all have a church home that you call home that you and your family go to and are part of a local church? 
So many people today are revival people without a local church. That's a sign you're going to be knocked out, knocked off, or you could be deceived. A local church, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Yeah. I understand it's the universal church, but it also applies to your individual church you're a part of. I have enough battles. I'm a part of a church here in Sarasota, and I'm glad to be a member because I need all the protection I can get from the powers of darkness. So I want the universal and I want the local in my life. And I have to say, you're going to have to let go of some of your tradition. I don't want to use the word tradition, your preferences, because I don't think many of our prophetic people are traditional, but they are preference dominated, which does the same thing that the other types of traditionalists do. So your preference may not be how God moves in your town or in this move. Like the movie out today, I guess I'm talking to you a little bit fast. The movie out today is called Jesus Revolution. Please go see it. It's on the Lonnie Frisbee revival, the Jesus people, great revival, good story. I would have never picked Lonnie Frisbee. He was not the kind of guy I would have picked to lead a revival. He didn't look it. He didn't talk it. His background was not good. And so God touches him and makes him this amazing revival leader. And uh, so we have to be open for people who don't look like me. I have my little Jimmy Swaggered hair. I have my glasses. I wear my shiny shoes. That's how I grew up. Lonnie Frizzy was a hippie. God may use a tattooed person. He may use whatever. Yeah. You're going to have to let it be. So that will be some things I think you have to work on. And then get your private, uh, what's the word? Get to the place where sin bugs you. Don't be judgmental, but where you don't want it in your life. You don't want to live around it. Don't get to the place where you're so compromised and so merciful that you permit sin. Mercy that permits sin is not godly mercy. It's human emotion. So there has to come a thing in you that you don't like the darkness. You don't want anything to do with the darkness. You want to be in the light. You don't mind going into darkness to get people out. You don't mind being missions, but you're not going to live your life in the darkness. We're going to live in the light. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Well, I fully agree with the geographical move. I mean, I just left my home in Newport Beach. I lived there for three years. Right at the beginning of the scandemic, I moved to Newport Beach. And, uh, you know, I was there for three years. Beautiful. Uh, you know, I was one block away from the ocean. It was incredible. But now, you know, because I'm traveling so much this year, I moved back to greater Los Angeles. And here we are. We just opened up a new office studio space. So we're making moves, geographical moves. We're getting things ready for the harvest. And I believe God is speaking to many of you as well uh, about moving in the natural and the spiritual. But there is a move coming and God's getting us ready for the billion soul harvest. This is a time, my friends. Now, all of you that are watching, if you are a part of this move, I want you to say amen. And I believe that from... Purim, and it's actually Purim right now, Dr. Roberts. It's Purim. And uh, I believe from Purim all the way to Passover to Pentecost, I believe we are in a two month window right now where there's going to be miracle signs and wonders. Actually, uh, three months. Uh, it's about two and a half, three months. But I believe we're in a two month window right now from Purim to Passover to Pentecost where God's going to begin to move with suddenlies, shocking events, surprises, and there's going to be great movements and momentums in your life. If you believe that, say amen. Now, friends of God, I believe that this is a season for us to partner with the Lord. And um, in, in, a, in a second, we're going to take up a time to sow and to bless the man of God, to sow into the word of the Lord, to bless uh, the work of of this ministry but dr roberts can you just pray for these people come on friends i want you to lift up your hands wherever you are and receive this prayer of impartation pray for a spirit of wisdom and revelation you yourself you've seen all these moves we started off our broadcast today talking about the generals and the moves of the past and then we talked about the asbury revival and we're talking about the season we're in now and we need to discern what God is doing. So can you pray for the spirit of wisdom, revelation, and whatever the Lord leads you for revival? Come on. And we come before your throne boldly and humbly. And we ask today for your Holy Spirit to come on every one of us and illuminate the right thoughts in our mind. 
Let us see things clearer. Remove the obstacles, remove the carnal voices, remove the preference voices, and let the sound of the Lord's voice be sharp and clear and directive. Father, let us not be bound to traditions or preferences. Deliver us from them that we may walk in the light and walk on the waters that even may be troubled. I pray, Father, that the wrong people get out of these people's lives. I pray for a social deliverance that you will deliver us from the wrong people. Get the wrong voice, the wrong influence. And then we also ask for the right people to be sent into our lives and ministries and our businesses. Let those people come in that are sent by God that we may do life with them, may do revival with them, may live together in these end times. Father, the word says, if we lack anything, ask. We ask for wisdom. We ask for knowledge. We ask for insight. And we ask for mighty power that will strengthen us to be able to live strong in troubled times. We pray that today. And we declare it to be thus and so over your life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen, and amen. Wow, wow, wow. People of God, let's give the man of God, Dr. Roberts, an uh, incredible round of applause. Give us some hearts and likes. Praise God. Now, friends, before we sow, Dr. Roberts, you and me, we're going to be together in Hawaii in a few yes. weeks. Let's talk about Hawaii. In two weeks? Is it that fast? It's in, in three weeks. Yes, okay, sir. That's better. It scared me for a minute. <laughs> get your, uh, your board shorts ready, right? Yes. Uh, get ready for some aloha. But you and me, we're going to be in two islands. Uh, we're going to be in Oahu and then in Hilo, Hawaii, which is the big islands. And we're going to be doing two schools. Now, friends, you look like you need a vacation. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You look like you need a vacation. All right. And what better place than going to Hawaii and sitting under myself and Dr. Roberts as we talk about the glory and the kingdom. Now, these intensive schools, it's going to be morning and afternoon, and the evenings are totally free. So, friends of God, this is literally two, three weeks away. We want to invite you. We want to have you fly in, drive in, swim in, do whatever you got to do. Uh, but also, you could be a part of the online school as well. But we want to invite you, three-day Oahu Glory Intensive. And then in Hilo, Hawaii, we're going to talk about the kingdom and go into leadership and kingdom and things of that nature. But Dr. Roberts, uh, any thoughts as we invite our guests and our viewers today to join and to maybe even be a part of the online school as well? I think it'll be a very, uh, I've been excited about it since you're going to be a part of it. First, I've not been to Hawaii now for about 10 years. I used to go there every year and preach in Hilo and Oahu, all the places. So it's good to be going back with you. And uh, so I'm coming with a strong message, prophetic and apostolic anointing to preach and to teach and then to lay hands on people. And, and uh, the Lord actually corrected me the other day to get back into that stronger vein of ministering and take my teaching stuff and put it more into books. He made a little adjustment in me. So I'm coming under a new mandate to preach and to teach and to grab people and pray for them. And this will manifest in this meeting. And with our, and it's also a day of corporate anointing. You're anointed mind working together to build up, to impart, and to even help Hawaii itself. So I would love for everybody to come and be a part of it. In these kind of meetings, I get to talk to people, sit on the front row or in the, at the table and get to talk with people one-on-one. -on -one. And that's always exciting to me too, to be able to share it with people that way. Amen, absolutely. Yeah, these two intensives, I mean, that's what it is. It's an intensive and and selectively, we're, we're not trying to have a mass group of people for the school, for the evenings. The, the meetings are absolutely free and it's going to be powerful. But the schools are, it's going to be much more studious, uh, specific, and it's going to be incredible, personal, uh, special time with myself and Dr. Roberts. So we can't wait to see you, friends. Dr. Roberts, thank you so much for being here. Everybody, let's give it up for the man of God, Dr. Roberts Lurden, for his time, his love, his wisdom, and his grace. God bless you, sir. Can't wait to see you in Hawaii. Now, people of God, I want you in this place. Do consider joining us in Hawaii, amen, whether online or in person. But, hey, the glory is always better in person, amen. I can't wait to meet you and shake your hand and love on you and Dr. Roberts as well. My goodness, 
he is a true general of the faith and really one of the last remaining generals uh, of that era. But friends, in this moment, I want to open up a time for you to sow. Amen. Let's bless the man of God. Let's bless God's general. And I want to open up a time for you to sow and, and respond to the Lord. Who knows that your seed will cause you to succeed. Your seed causes you to succeed. And I believe in this moment, this atmosphere, uh, let's honor the Lord and let's respond. I mean, I, I feel such a stirring for revival right now. I feel the spirit of awakening. I feel the spirit of, of expectation. And I want you to expect God to do some supernatural, even today. In this season of Purim, in this time window of Purim, where the Esthers arise and Mordecai was honored, in this supernatural time of Purim, I want you to sow a seed for Purim and to sow a seed of honor, praise God. So even as you sow, I want you to comment honor, uh, and I want you to comment honor as you sow a seed of honor, and as you sow a seed into revival, amen? Who here knows that you can only uh, you can only receive from what you honor. And when we honor men of God like Dr. Roberts, who he is, what he has, what he's been through, then you'll be able to receive. I remember Dr. Roberts asked me over the dinner table once and he said, Pastor Ben, why do you think you have been able to connect with so many generals of the faith already? And I'm 31, I was 31 at the time. And I said, I believe it's because I'm a man of honor. Also because I'm actually doing kingdom work. I'm not just talking about it. I'm not just trying to be a friend or buddy, buddy. I'm doing the work of God, amen. And also uh, because I'm a man of integrity and character. Praise God, I can be trusted. And because I'm a man of honor, the Lord opens up doors, amen? And that's why I'm writing a book right now called The Lost Art of Honor, praise God. So as you sow, I want you to comment honor. It would behoove me for me to not open up a time for you to sow and to bless the man of God, amen? It would behoove me for me to not uh, open up a time for you to bless the work of God and to bless the work of God's ministry. So thank you, Amy. God bless you. DC, God bless you. Praise God. Sharabataya. Praise God. Continue to sow, my friends. Continue to bless the Lord and bless of God, Dr. Robert Lerden in this place. Praise God. Thank you, Vicky. God bless you. Hallelujah. Marilyn, God bless you. Shatarabatata. Shatarabata. Come on, somebody. In this atmosphere of glory. Wow. Pastor Karen, God bless you. I mean, I'm Dana Marie Clark. God bless you. Michael or Melissa Feller, God bless you, God bless you. Emmy, I mean, I love seeing Dr. Robert's passion and excitement as he was just going all out about Asbury Revival. But it's starting, my friends. It's starting. Antoinette, Ohio is on fire. Hawaii is on fire. Amen. Well, I hope to see you there. Tell your friends about it, Antoinette. Thank you, Amy Joe Baird. <laughs> Sharababarata, zikarabatata. I'm going to open up another minute or so for you to sow in this atmosphere, in this moment. Do you discern the atmosphere that is before you now? Amen, Prophet Zivana. Thank you. Bless you. Come on, you on YouTube watching, go ahead and sow as the Lord leads you. There are moments to sow. There are specific times to sow more than others. And so in this atmosphere of Purim, in this season of Purim, hallelujah. Thank you, Chanel Jackson. 
Sophia, Samuel. Amen. Absolutely. Grand Junction is ready for the fire. I agree with that. Glory to God. Glory to God. Were you blessed today? That was fun. That was fun. I really enjoyed that broadcast today. And seriously, consider joining us in Hawaii. The flights are very cheap right now. DD, God bless you. Sharamata Dedede. You're saving for Israel. Amen, DC. And we're also going to Israel in the month of October. I mean, we got so many trips, incredible events happening this year. I know it's hard to choose. But the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. Thank you, Apostle Pamela. Miss you. In fact, I'm going to do a clubhouse this Saturday. Glory to God. Rebe Sitamata. Glory to God. Yeah, Los Angeles is ripe for revival. I mean, there's a number of moves of God, even the Pasadena revival, the Los Angeles outpouring, getting ready for hope. There's there's some stirring everywhere, friends. Amen. Michelle, more information on the trip to Israel and Hawaii. You can go to benlimglobal.com, our website. Amen. Glory to God. Purim the fest. Amen. Absolutely. We are in a season of Purim. Thank you, Relina Rascon. Well, friends, thank you so much for sowing. God bless you. This is the seventh day of March and is Purim. And last night I did a whole webinar on Purim and reversing the curse in the courts of heaven. So if you were not there, you missed it. But step into that grace and receive what God is doing. Amen. Well, friends, real quick before... We end today's broadcast. Uh, I want to talk about some upcoming events. Amen. So stay tuned here. Uh, first and foremost, on March, let's see the date. We have a Facebook, YouTube broadcast with Evangelist John Ramirez. And that is going to be on March 20th. On March 20th. So, of course, the Evangelist John Ramirez. Uh, you know, he, he, was, he is an ex-Satanist. He used to be a sat satanic priest. So this is going to be powerful. Deliverance and freedom with myself and evangelist John Ramirez. That's going to be March 20th. So make sure you jump on and you join. And make sure uh, you tell your friends about it because it's going to be powerful. Of course, um, you know, it's interesting because the last few weeks, we've been I've been seeing a lot more deliverances in our meetings, okay? And I'm more of a healing miracle guy, prophetic guy. And of course, deliverance happens in our meetings, but there seems to be a bit more of an emphasis of deliverance in our meetings in the last few weeks. Uh, but the glory releases deliverance and the glory releases healings and, and miracles. So go ahead and join us Praise God. Next uh, next week, I'm going to be in Pennsylvania. Oh, first, I'm going to be in New Jersey. Excuse me. First, I'm going to be in New Jersey next week at Mays Landing, New Jersey. So come and see me in the East Coast, my friends. Come and see me in the East Coast. And uh, we'd love to see you. That's going to be next Wednesday in Mays Landing, New Jersey. Glory to God. Um, also, next week, I'm going to be in Pennsylvania for three days. Friends, these meetings, I believe it's going to blow up. It's, it's, I believe it's not just going to be a three-day type of conference, okay? And I, I just want to say, everywhere we're going, we're seeing demonstrable moves of God. Okay, we're seeing... We're seeing the power of God show up like never before. 
But these three days, we've already prepared for the next week right after that. So we're already getting ready for week two for Pennsylvania because I feel such an expectation for what God's about to do. So friends, even Open Heavens family, you guys get ready to join us in Pennsylvania because I believe these three days in Lebanon, Pennsylvania is going to be life changing. Amen. Now, once again, let's talk about Hawaii because I'm excited for Hawaii. <laughs> Lord knows I need to get in that water and get in that Hawaii glory, that aloha. Join me and Dr. Robert Salerdin for three days of Oahu Glory Intensive. Yes, you can register uh, for the online school. But why not be there in person? Amen. In Hawaii, it will change your life. There's something so majestic, supernatural, beautiful about Hawaii. Literally, whenever I'm in Hawaii, that's where I receive a reset from God. I encounter God so strong. Just it's it really is paradise, heaven on earth. So join us three days uh, from March 28th to March 30th. And right after that, two days of kingdom intensive in Hilo, Hawaii. Amen. Two days of kingdom intensive in Hilo, Hawaii. So just jump over to the next island. Yeah, from island to island, from glory to glory. Amen. So jump over to the next island and be with us as we do this intensive on the kingdom and leadership and Wow, wow, wow. It's going to be incredible. We do have a conference coming up, although right now on March 7th, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard, our registration is not out yet. But friends, drum roll, please. On April 27th to 29th, we have a conference here in Southern California. Uh, open Heavens, Power and Glory. Myself, Evangelist John Ramirez, and Jake Hamilton. Three days, Open Heavens, Power and Glory. We would love to have you. We would love for you to come to be there, whether online or in person. And like I said, it is not out yet, the registration, but we would love to have you there. So join us, be with us, and uh, hopefully by the end of today, we'll get the registration ready. But open heavens, power and glory, myself, Evangelist John Ramirez, and Jake Hamilton. Fly in, drive in, do whatever you got to do to be there. It is going to be a powerful three-day weekend conference. Amen. God's doing a new thing, praise God. So if you're interested in joining us for that, say, I'm interested. Amen. I'm interested. Glory. Hallelujah. Well, and next, um, I do have an online group mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. And uh, I would love to mentor you, to disciple you, to walk with you, pour into you. And I would love for you to be a part of this group. 7M stands for the seven mountains of influence, the seven spheres of society. And I would love to walk with you in life. And I'm, I'm telling you, this group is filled with world changers. These people are incredible. I have the greatest honor of, of walking with them and being a friend with them in 7M Glory Equip. If you join, what's included is, of course, number one, you have more access to me. Number two, we have two private Zooms every month, at least two. And then number three, uh, you are part of a private community and a group on Telegram where you get, to, uh, you get to communicate, you get to connect, network, and really build community. So go ahead and join. It's not too late. Let's start this year. Continue this year. Start this year in the right covering and right mentorship and aligned with the right people. Amen. 
And last but not least, friends of God, if you love this broadcast today, go ahead and share, tag somebody, consider giving me a follow on all of our social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We love and appreciate you and your support. And I pray that the revival fires of God will come upon you like never before. I pray that you will discern the times. And today, from March 7th to tomorrow, March 8th, in this open window of Purim, that you would experience the reversals of God and the turnarounds of heaven. This is Dr. Bentley, one of your favorite prophetic voices. Thank you for joining me today. I want to say I love you. God bless you. Hag Purim. Hag Purim. And expect divine reversals. In Jesus' name. God bless you. See you soon. Shalom.